Hello, this is Richard Silverstein, author of Tikkun Olam. Tonight we'll be talking about the Tel Aviv Bar Noir gay murders. Oscar Wilde said homosexuality was the love that dare not speak its name. In Israel, the Bar Noir murders are the tragedy that dare not speak its name. Every journalist and police officer in Israel knows details about this case, which they can't tell the public because there is a gag order. Ironically, the police themselves originally requested it. Despite the fact that they held a press conference revealing the full details of the case, and the press published its account. The judge in the case reinforced the gag order and compelled the media to remove the stories. And that's why I'm going to name names tonight. It's taken four years, thousands of hours of police work, and the most expensive investigation in the history of the Israeli police, but they finally appear to have cracked the case of the Tel Aviv killings, in which a counselor and young member were killed by weapons fire sprayed throughout the room. Ten others were wounded that night, with at least two paralyzed for life. The unofficial Israeli police web forum Shotrim has revealed further information on the attack, the suspects, and the motive. Though we should keep in mind that this is the police version and not necessarily what really happened. At the time of the shooting, the center's director was Shaul Ganon, age 49, an 18-year activist in the gay community. According to the source posting to the web forum, Ganon was suspected of rape of a 15-year-old minor boy. Through a gag order requested by the police, I've come to know that the alleged victim was Benjamin Felician, who is now 20. Felician's brother Haggai, 23, learned that Benjamin had gone to the Bar Noir Gay Youth Center. And this being a very traditional Mizrahi family, the news couldn't have sat well with Haggai. When he asked his younger brother why he'd gone to the Bar Noir, Benjamin allegedly told him that Ganon had raped him. Again, according to the police version, the alleged victim then announced he wanted vengeance and planned to kill Ganon. Haggai was enlisted in the conspiracy. I heard another version of the story from an Israeli LGBT activist who says that Ganon had a consensual affair with Felician. But spurn the boy. Thus, in this account, Felician wasn't raped, but jilted, and then sought revenge. At some point in the planning of the attack, they enlisted the help of another individual, Tarlin Khankishiev, who may have played some role after the crime was committed as well. He's the fourth suspect arrested. Another individual who was familiar with the layout of the facility and helped the killer plan his entrance and escape turned state's evidence, uh, the equivalent of a U.S. witness protection program, he helped the police solve the case. Though this individual was integral to the conspiracy and deserves to be outed as much as the others, I'm not going to divulge his identity, though I do know it, because his life is probably in enough jeopardy as it is. The suspects live in Pardes Katz, a largely Mizrahi pocket of B'nai Brak. Vala reports the Felicians were brought up Haredi, but had left that world behind. Though Haredim are generally considered um, Ashkenazi, there are inst instances in which Mizrah Mizrahi embrace it. Given this history of religious zealotry, there are inst it would only exacerbate the hatred Haggai would feel not only toward Ganon, but the entire gay culture, which they might feel victimized their brother. The biblically inspired hatred of homosexuality inherent in Orthodox Judaism must have rubbed off on them. Ganon was not at the youth center on the night of the attack. Once the shooter, presumably Haggai Felician, discovered this, he could have left. If his sole motive was to scare or kill Ganon, that's what he would have done. But the killer didn't do that. Instead, he attacked others who had nothing to do with Ganon or his alleged crime, spraying bullets indiscriminately throughout the room, filled with innocent people. The only reason for doing so would be hatred of gays, and that is a hate crime. Any sex act between a 46-year-old man and a 15-year-old might legally be construed as rape. So I'm not excusing what he may have done. Ganon has been accused of similar unprofessional conduct with other young people. For that reason, he was dismissed from his post at the center. So he appears to have a history of exploiting young gay men. 
He was also arrested in this case because he refused to offer the authorities all the information he knew about it. So he appears, he, his silence is one of the principal causes for it languishing for years. But all that aside, whether or not Ganon carries any responsibility for this tragedy, the fact remains that a score of innocent gay Israelis paid a supreme price for being gay. The police claim this was merely revenge against an accused rapist, falsely calling it a, quote, personal vendetta, unquote. That allows them to treat it as purely a sex crime and so limit the fallout. The point is not what originally motivated the crime, whether it was sex or revenge, but rather what actually happened the night of the attack. The shooter killed people because they were gay, and that is homophobia. And homophobia is not a sex crime. It is a crime that tears at the fabric of society. It is a crime against not just an individual, as conventional crimes are, but against an entire class of people. An LGP LGBT activist I know notes that Ganon was one of those who inadvertently inspired the notion of pinkwashing. He gave shelter to Palestinian gay youths who fled their families for fear of persecution or violence. In doing so, Ganon didn't just offer shelter, which would be fine. He went further and heaped abuse on the homophobia of Palestinian culture and pointed to the superiority of Israeli attitudes on the subject. This crime will certainly give the lie to that claim since it proves there is a huge amount of gay hatred among the Israeli Mizrahi and Orthodox community. You'll recall there have been several acts of violence, including a stabbing at a Jerusalem gay pride parade some years ago in which the attacker was Orthodox. Rabbis from the community have denounced the gay pride movement in vitriolic ways that would only exacerbate these sorts of reactions. It is especially important to report this story because there, have, there has uh, been a gag order preventing the Israeli media from fully reporting it. Even though the gag was partially lifted, the press still may not report Ganon or Felician's names. I believe such secrecy is detrimental to a society uh, understanding the ills that afflict it. Israel needs a free press and a judicial process that doesn't enshroud a national tragedy like this in confusion and mystery. This has been Richard Silverstein for Tikkun Olam. Good night.